Hey guys, welcome to the first part of this stencil level designer series. So in this series, we're going to look at uh, how to layer our, uh, our different uh, tile sets so that we can uh, get our characters to look like it's appearing in front of or behind uh, certain tiles. So you can see my character is uh, layered behind these cloud tiles here, but he's layered in front of or on top of the, um, the fences right here. Okay. Uh, you'll also notice that uh, I've enabled what's called the debug drawing mode, which shows the uh, hitbox for the characters and the tiles as well. So you'll notice that uh, some of these tiles are, um, they're, they're, sorry, the hitbox is exactly as the shapes of the tiles are. So if it's slanted, right, my character is going to slide down this. And if it tries to run up it, okay, it's going to slide along that line. Okay. Uh, likewise, over here uh, in opposition, I've got a tile set where my character can stand as if it were almost floating on, on air itself. Okay. So if I took off the debug drawing mode, he would be standing on air. Okay. And that's because the hitbox is this square shape, of course, and uh, the other hitbox is, is the slanted shape here. So if I turn that off, uh, just to show you guys. So let's disable that and let's just test this one more time so that you can see the differences uh, without that and what the game would actually look like when a, a person plays your game. So it looks something like this, obviously. Okay, And you can see that the character is, if I jump back up here, okay. he's, it looks like he's standing on white space. Okay. Uh, and that's because we, we did take off the, uh, the hitboxes. But because the hitbox is actually extending out here, the character looks like he's standing on nothing. Okay, And over here, now this is because my character is uh, a little bit higher up. Okay? But he is sliding down that. Okay? There's, isn't that uh, invisible uh, staircase there? Okay, So what's going on? Why does it actually do that? Okay, If we inspect our stencil game, so this is the scene that I've created here. Uh, what I've done is down here in my layer section, I have three different layers, a front layer, a main layer, and a back layer. And this is very similar to um, something like a sandwich or a burger. And what's on top is appears in front. Okay. So what I actually did was these fences here, I drew these fences on the uh, back layer, okay? So these fences here, okay, if I put them down, these are behind the main character, okay? Now, what I did was I put most of the main things that my character interacts with in the main layer. Okay, that's the part that the player is gonna interact with, okay? Now, on the front layer, I put the clouds. So the cloud appears to cover up or is in front of the, uh, the player. Okay. So that's how we got that layering situation to happen. Now, the other part about uh, the character floating on uh, in the air, right? this has to do with how we set the, the hitbox for our tiles and our players as well. Okay, So let's look at the tile set. Let's investigate the, the tile part of this. Okay, Now, if we go back over here, this mud stuff, Okay, the slanted tile. If we look at it, um, the collision bounds right here is a square. Okay, but if we look at it, our shape is actually this triangle. Okay, so what we actually want to do is we want to set it to ah. Okay, so we want to match the shape with our top. So we want to select this one. Okay, now if we try to run our game one more time with that set, let's try that out. And okay, so if I try this out one more time, you notice the character can actually now slide down this as if it were an actual round. Okay. Now the other part I also want to mention is you'll notice that uh, the clouds has something where if my character jumps into it, there's there's sort of a ceiling there that prevents him from going through that, okay? If I inspect my cloud a little bit further, 
you notice that this is only half or the top half of the square filled up. So that's why the character can hide his head in there, but he can't go straight through it because part of it is solid, the other part is not. Okay. Uh, likewise, if you inspect the fence element, okay, even though they're in different layers, we actually have still have to tell the computer, no, we don't want anything to collide with this tile. Okay. Have it be no collisions. Okay. And that's why he can move through the fence here. Okay. So you'll I'll just maybe do this test up for you guys. If I have the square selected for the fence, and I test my game out. Okay, now you'll recall the fence I put on the back layer. So even though the, they're not in the same layer, they can still interact with each other. Okay, so I'm moving him into the fence, and he can actually stand on top of the fence now. Okay, the layering only um, shows the visual aspect of uh, whether the character is being covered up or whether a tile is covering the character or not. Okay, so it only shows the visual aspect of it. It doesn't manage the, the collision, right? So the collision and the visual layering are actually two separate things. Okay, so in order for them to behave properly, you'll need to make sure um, that both the tiles cannot be collided if you don't want them to touch each other, and you'll have to make sure that you layer them properly and put them into the appropriate layers. Okay, that's quite a bit of information for this first tutorial. Um, I hope you experiment with some of these things yourself, and um, you know when you create your own tiles in the future that you'll know how to set the different collision bounds or the different hitboxes for those tiles. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys in the next tutorial.